since the excavation of both cogs in 2000 2002, the timbers have been, uh, or the ships have, have been disassembled. So we're dealing with more than four, maybe 500 planks and timbers from, that sh from those ships. And we want to get an actual uh, proper reconstruction of the original form of those ships in the 1300s. So what we are doing here is measuring the ship uh, with this uh, kind of uh, ferro arm. Each piece of timber is measured very accurately. Then we can print after it these files uh, into real pieces on a scale of one on one tenth. And with these pieces we can remake, rebuild the ship in a scale and we make a model and with this model we can actually see what the ship was doing, uh, how it was sailing. Um, so we, uh, we can do some experiments with, uh, with the model. And that way we can see how uh, the shipping, seafaring on uh, medieval seas was going on. So I'm now measuring the hole uh, where the pens were in. Um, if you can see this piece of wood was attached to the bottom of the ship. All those 3D models of the planks will be uh, printed out in a small plastic model and then we want to start reconstructing, reassembling the whole ship. We want to have a look on how it was constructed back in those days and what the actual form and construction was of those ships. And this can then, in a later stage, be used for hydraulic tests. We can see how cogs were sailing against wind, how they would react in wave action, etc., etc. This can also be studied here in this uh, laboratory. So what we are doing uh, every day, we're taking new timbers in from the containers. Uh, we put them here in our tank so to keep the, all the timbers wet, so they don't start cracking or drying out. And then the, the processes that we're going through is on the first hand we want to clean all the timbers and sample every interesting bits and pieces which can be useful for other research. And then on the other hand we also want to do research on dating the timbers, getting the provenance from where the timbers came from. We want to know some more about uh, the, the moss that has been used in between the planking in order to keep the ship watertight. And for the uh, conservation itself, we're doing uh, wood quality testing as well in order to make a, a proper preparation for the conservation project, which will start next year. Concerning cogs, we don't know much about how it was constructed. We don't have any plans or drawings for uh, how it was uh, assembled or constructed in those days. So it was all a concept in the mind of the shipbuilder who made it just by eye and by concept in his head and this we want to reconstruct as well we want to get so to speak in the head of the shipbuilder to see how these ships seven six seven hundred years ago were constructed this ship is from the 14th century and uh, in the 14th century um, our region was uh, uh, a very um, commercial region we had a lot of cities who were growing very fast at that time. The city of Ghent, for instance, was one of the biggest cities of Europe at that time. And uh, a lot of these, um, these uh, richness was uh, made by commerce and by shipping. And that's why a ship like the Cork is so important for our country. With towns like Bruges, Ghent, Antwerp, we were very into that international trade that became very active in the late medieval ages. And the reason why that became uh, active or an important element in that whole story were those large cargo ships, those cogs that were sailing from one big town to the other. We don't know yet much about these ships and every ship we can find uh, will tell us more about the history. So these are quite excep exceptional finds, especially because we have uh, almost complete cog. This is quite unique in Europe. And um, it's, as a matter of uh, speaking, it's like floating cath cathedral, which we can study here in our lab, and it can tell us a whole lot about that uh, uh, period in the late medieval uh, ages. Mm -hmm.